Well, now, it's been three years since we blasted our way through the barren wastelands of Pandora and Borderlands, a game that recently won the Guinness World Record for most guns in a video game. Is that right, Randy? Yeah, in fact, uh, the Guinness guys are going to be, uh, I think, at E3 either tomorrow or Wednesday, yeah. uh, presenting the award live to the team at, at E3 on the show floor. It's going to be amazing. Obviously, Randy Pitchford is here with us to talk about Borderlands 2, a game that's setting all kinds of records and <laughs> revealing a new character. Tell us about it. Yeah, uh, I think you guys are the first ones that are going to get a chance to look at from the perspective of Zero, who is the assassin character, one of the new character classes in Borderlands, and this guy is a badass. Uh, he's an assassin, which means he's really great at stealth, really great at getting up close, uh, but he can also uh, blink in and out, and, and he, he is your sniper class, too, if you like that kind of thing, so he's a very versatile character. Talk a little bit about designing the new characters in this game. I think with the original Borderlands, you knew you hit something, but you wanted to expand on that. What were the goals with the characters like Zero? Yeah, well, you know, the original Borderlands had four great playable characters, and, and you'd pick one at the beginning of the game, and these characters were very unique. They had different capabilities, and they'd grow their skills as you play. As you play. With Borderlands 2, we wanted to make sure those characters had a role in the story, but we wanted to create new gameplay, so we created four all-new characters, including Zero the Assassin, uh, Salvador the Gunzerker, Maya is our new Siren, and there's uh, Axton who's the commando. And the thing that makes a hero great is a great villain. So Borderlands 2 features this villain known as Handsome Jack, and this guy's a real jerk. He wants to take over the planet. He kind of sees himself as a dictator. And I think in this mission that we're playing, uh, you're helping the robot Claptrap uh, go on a mission to cut down all of these statues that have been erected in Handsome Jack's honor. And the more you cut them down, the more pissed off he gets. And it's kind of a sign of rebellion in, in this uh, city of opportunity, uh, one of the big Hyperion cities on the planet of Pandora. Yeah, and that's a, a, an area that we'll talk about as well. Obviously, a lot of diversity now with characters and also environments. We're going to see some new places to visit, right? Yes. You know, Pandora is a large planet, and some of the corporations had been there for a long time before they pulled out. Uh, some of them are coming back in, in the events that have transpired inspired since Borderlands. So there's a lot of different environments. There's everything from these giant kind of progressive cities to the barren wastelands you remember in the first game to the lush, uh, beautiful kind of uh, more jungle-like environments, uh, even to the Arctic tundra and the snow. And this is this game is huge. Borderlands 2 is something that we, when we started, we thought, well, we'll make it about as big as Borderlands 1, and it ended up being something much, much bigger, much more grand, much larger. Uh, and, and this is really important because it kind of is consistent with our, our philosophy and our dream with this with this game to, to kind of not just make a, a game that you consume, but turn Borderlands into a hobby. And yeah. it, it, it's a hobby for many of us, and we know it's a hobby for many of our fans, and we wanted to make sure that there's enough uh, material, enough content, and enough to explore there, where, where there's always something to find. Yeah, obviously it had a huge fan base with the original title, but you're looking to grow that and attract new gamers as well. What do you think it is that's going to bring new gamers into the fray with Borderlands 2 that didn't check out the original? You know, with Borderlands, we were really the underdogs. Everybody thought we were crazy. First of all, we were blending uh, the, fir the fun of a first-person action game, you know, the moment-to-moment -moment fun that just feels great to move and shoot and take down enemies, and we were blending that moment-to-moment -moment fun with sort of the longer-range engagement that comes from RPG games, like games like Diablo, where it's really fun to get loot and to, to choose a character and to grow that character and have that character become more powerful over time as you level up. And uh, blending those two genres together has never really been done successfully before, so everyone thought we were crazy when we began. Uh, we figured it out, of course, and, you know, we, we believed in it all the time. We were very confident in, in our bet and our promise, but I have to say that that it even the success of the first game even surprised us. So instead of coming in now as an underdog, Borderlands 2 gets to enter this market as a leader, yeah. and uh, and it's it's pretty exciting. You know, when we were really thrilled when when 2K, uh, the, the publisher of the game, really got behind it and and did two limited edition sets. There's right. the um, the Vault Hunters edition, which includes a Marcus bobblehead, which is one of the things you collect in the game, and a bunch of other cool stuff, including some in-game items. And we also had the Ultimate Loot Chest edition, which is, comes in the giant loot chest from the game, within four days, all of the allotments yeah. sold out. Now we have our, our, our fans, our gamers, like mad at us because they, they can't get a hold of it. Yeah. I saw one on eBay for 600 bucks. The Whoa. game doesn't even come out until September. Wow. So, and there's uh, a new character, too, with one of those editions, correct, that you guys are going to be or talking that, about doing later on? Actually, if you just pre-order any edition oh, gotcha. of the game, you become part of the Premier Club. Uh, there's a, on our website, if you go to gearboxsoftware.com and find the Borderlands page, you can find the Premier Club uh, information there. There's a lot of 
have great opportunities, a lot of great advantages to becoming part of the Premier Club. And there's a lot of uh, collaborating retailers around the world that will help you become part of the Premier Club. But yes, there, what we've decided to do is when we finish the game, as we're going into certification, we're going to build a fifth character and we're going to add it to Borderlands. And it'll be available later as a DLC or something. Uh, probably within 60 to 90 days of the launch of the game is when yeah. we'll be able to finish that and give that to people. But what we decided, because we have so many great fans and they really made Borderlands what it is when they, they believed with us and came on board uh, from being the underdogs, that we yeah. decided that if you pre-order the game, uh, you will get this this fifth character for free that's awesome. uh, if you're part of the Premier Club. So that's, yeah. a, that's a really great thing and I'm really excited that our publishing partner stepped up with us on that. There's a lot of people excited about Borderlands and a lot of people with questions for you as well. Justine, I understand you have some questions for uh, Randy from the interwebs. That's oh, we uh, do. So thank you, Daniel. Let's find out what people want to know on Twitter. A lot of people are talking about how they really love the customizable weapons in Borderlands yeah. 1. So we've got a tweet here from Walnut the Wise who <laughs> dreams of driving a pink buggy across alien <laughs> planets. Who Will doesn't? there be customizable vehicles? You know, in Borderlands 2, uh, getting around the world of Pandora in Borderlands 1 is a lot of fun, but when you have a vehicle, it's a lot more fun. So in Borderlands 2, we really upped the ante a lot. We've added more vehicles to the game. Uh, of course, the classic runner is back. Uh, we've also added a lot more customizable options, not just paint jobs, because you could drive a pink buddy, bunny <laughs> in uh, buggy in Borderlands 1, but now we've actually added some options for your weapon loadouts and other configurations that make it a lot of fun. I don't want to spoil anything, uh, and, and you know, still, vehicles are mostly a transfer transportation uh, 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 method get to get around the planet, which is one of the other reasons why we made sure to have vehicles that can support all four players jumping into one player. Now, Borderlands is great when you play it alone, but when you play it with friends, it, it, some argue it's even better, it's and you can have every, everybody in the game jump into one vehicle and move, around, move on. So it, it's pretty fun to both customize your vehicle and to explore the different kinds of vehicles that exist in Borderlands 2. Awesome. That's great. Well, remember, guys, we need to keep hearing from you, so you guys are the voice of E3, so keep tweeting.